What's up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of Blood on the Razor Wire TV, where we bring it to you real and we bring it to you raw. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button, hit that like button, share the video, and make sure you leave a comment. As promised, I told people that we were going to be doing an interview live from Polak. Um, we got the guy on the phone. We're just going to call him T today. But um, T, man, talk a little bit about you and how much time you got and, you know, why you're in federal prison. Uh, my, I'm from uh, Kansas City, Missouri. Uh, I'm in for uh, a felon in possession of a firearm. I got uh, two 24 and a half year sentences uh, for uh, allegedly possessing firearms. Uh, you know, just sitting here, being here for eight years, uh, three in the uh, system, in Pollock, Louisiana, locked down. Let me ask you this, T, right? I mean, you're in Pollock. How old were you when you got sentenced to 20 years? Uh, I was 25. What was it like for a 25-year-old to get 20 years in federal prison? Man, honestly, man, it, it really shattered me because the whole situation was, you know, I'm in jail for getting shot. I actually got shot five times in front of my house. And, uh... My girlfriend had a registered firearm and I returned fire. And when I, uh, I guess, be being a felon, trying to protect my life and not even, like, you know, I didn't keep the gun, none of that after that, but I guess since I've shot the gun, you know, that gave me 24 and a half years. It, it really messed me up because I didn't think it, you know, me trying to protect myself would be a reason for me to get 24 and a half years. You know, us people with, with murder, they get more time than that. I hear you. Listen, I want you to talk up so that people can hear you, all right? All right. Um, and, you know, what was your first prison? Was it USP Pollock? As far as federal prisons, yeah, this is my first federal prison that I've been to. What's it like living at USP Pollock, bro? <sighs> Pins and needles, you know, anything at any point of time, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta uh, keep your eyes open. I mean, for the most part, you gotta stay to yourself, you know, it just, it's, it's dangerous, man. Cause at any given time, any time, anything can happen. You don't know how it's gonna happen or when it's gonna happen. Or if it's with you or with somebody that you know, like, it's just, it's crazy. I know if I know a few months ago the DC car got into it with the Muslims, right? Yeah. What was that like, man? Was it chaotic? I mean, were they stabbing? I mean, tell the people what was going on. Man, it's this picture hell raising. Man, it was everywhere. You hear me? I hear you. I want you to talk up though, because I want the people to be able to hear you. Nah, I mean it was it was serious. You know, it was it was a lot of people. You know, a lot of people got hurt. You know what I'm saying? Uh, people lost eyes, you know, like, it, it was terrible, man. Like, it's just, a, in, this, in this closed environment, you know, where you're supposed to get, get rehabilitated, you know, this is what you're going through. You're getting traumatized in here, for real. I know, I was there before. Definitely a very dangerous federal prison to be in. I want to talk a little bit about Mario. You know who Mario is, right? Yeah. One of the big yeah, DC respect. homies, well respected guy, right? Yeah, we're very well, well, well respected. What did you think about what did you think about Mario? What type of dude was he to you? Well, actually, I was uh, I was in I was with him for a couple of like a year, you know what I'm saying? He's pretty stick to himself, you know, work out, stay out the way, you know, reserve, you know, spoke when he needed to, but you know, he really wasn't nobody that was like, you know, I don't think he was, uh, you know, probably in the past, it was probably one of them dudes, you know, troublemaker, probably bully, but I think mean, Tommy calmed him down, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I had did time with Mario. I thought he was a pretty well-respected dude. He was known for knocking dudes out, just keeping it real, yeah. right? Um, But oh, well-respected, yeah. you know, men respect men. He was that type of dude. Um. Yeah. You know, I want the people to know what happened over there at Pollock, right? Because the people are like, ah, oh, you don't know what you're talking about. I did a little video about it. You know, tell the people. I know it involved Brian. He was a crip. But you tell you tell the people what happened. I want to know. I mean, 
I mean, you gotta look at it like this. Like, first off, we in these, it's a unit where 120 something people in right here. You got four phones, four computers, you know, and you come out for three hours. So within three hours, a hundred, you know, say 120 people gotta use the phone. Or, let's just say 60 or 80 of them. Depending on how they let it out, you get, you know, two hours to three hours to do that. Sometimes these days people don't go without talking to people. But it's a situation where, you know, you forced to, you know, this picture being behind the door for months at a time or two months or a couple of weeks, anything. You know, you got COVID going on out there. You don't know what letters nobody got. None of that. So... And a lot of people can't think past go. So, you know, you know, reaching out to your family and being in touch with the outside world, that's what really get a lot of people by here. So when that situ situations like that arise, you know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, some people, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a, it's a lash out moment. You know, everybody, everybody ain't been blessed to come to the realization that just, taking your time and being patient and you know what I'm saying, realizing that sometimes you got to think for other people and you know, it's some people that's trying to prove stuff, you know, so situations can get took out of hand and it's a situation that got took out of hand and it wasn't, you know, they weren't supposed to go as far as it went, but you know, stuff happened. Let me ask you this, right T? You know, when we talk about the situation, people want to kind of know the details. It was over the telephone, obviously, right? Did, you know, tell the people what happened. I mean, the other kid's name was Brian. He was a crip, right? Was he? Where was he from? Uh, 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 uh just like Nashville. So he's a crip. Nashville, yeah. He was a crip from Nashville. Does Mario end up beating him up over the phone? Uh, I mean, tell the people yeah, what happens. Yeah. yeah, like, you know. It was a fair one, for real. Not a fair one. Somebody, you know, as, as we know, you know, the guy, you know, he uh, he most definitely did his number on him. His uh, motherfucker can't take it, you know. His teeth got knocked, his teeth get knocked out, his body parts get injured, you know, people can't live with that. So. Let me ask you this, Was did Brian get his teeth knocked out? So Brian lost his teeth, and this is what happens in prison, right? They're beefing over the telephone. Everybody's locked down for, you know, two, three weeks over that Muslim in D.C. thing. They come out. People want to talk to their people. You know, there's a two, three hundred people out there trying to get on the phone, and some guys can't get on. People start beefing. Mario knocks the kid out, beats him up, beats up his body a little bit. And then what happens, man? Double back. Catch, catch, catch him slipping. Slick. Yeah, bam. He slid in there and did his thing. Was Mario laying down? I mean, how did he catch him slipping, though? People want to know. We can't just play, hey, he was slipping. Yeah, I think that probably, uh, probably, I think, like, using it. Say, say that again? Like, using it, like, the bathroom. Oh, he was using it? Oh, okay. So he caught him out there. Yeah. How many times did he hit him, do you know? Not to make them unrecognizable, sir. Man, I, I mean, I wonder, he must have hit him the first, because, I mean, you would think Mario would get up and before, were they fighting in the cell? Yeah, but, you know, it's, like, I guess it was pretty much over with, with that, because I, I think from, from not only from what it was, like, you know, the, uh, the size difference, you know what I'm saying? Like, how that took into effect, you know, so... Uh, that, you know. Well, let me ask you this. Was Brian a big dude or a little dude? Yeah, he, you know, the big, big youngsters. Oh, so Brian was a big dude. He wasn't a little dude. Yeah, but not as far as, you ain't gonna say, like, brolic or nothing, though. You know what I'm saying? It's just, you know, like, you know, big. So he had a little size on him, went in there. And Mario was yeah. a big dude, right? Was Mario still a nah, big dude? Yeah. You know, action figure. Yeah. Most definitely action figure. Shake and shake all that. So let, let me ask you this, though. What type of dude was Brian? Honestly, 
uh, got along with everybody for real, man. Like, you know, got along with everybody, man. Like, it's just like, cool, dude. You, you wouldn't have expected it. You know what I'm saying? You know, you know, one of the dudes keep everybody laughing, you know, like, cool people, man. And I know, you know, I read some stuff. I think Brian just gave back a bunch of time, did he not? Yeah, yeah. I think like 30, if I'm not mistaken. And it's crazy because he was on, you know, he was young. He gave back 30 years, and now he's about to get it all back again for a murder at USP Pollock. Over a phone. Crazy. Let me ask you about this. You guys are on lockdown now. But you actually got a you actually got a little bit of a legal call right now. Um, what's going on over at the prison right now? Same thing. Another incident. Somebody, you know, we got locked down now because somebody else and got killed. It's crazy. It's like it ain't even been. It wasn't even two, three weeks. Look at step behind the door again. Let me ask you this though, because I read some of the articles. They said that there were people fighting in this new incident, you know, different groups of people, um, when you guys were out, whatever. So the other kid that dies, he's also from DC. Did you know him or no? Nah, I can't, I can't say I, like, I seen just, you know, just a couple, you know, cause it's right. I see him a couple times, but he's not he, a couple every day. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But like, as far as like, just having conversations, nah. And this happened in a different unit. He didn't get killed in the unit that you're in, right? No, nah, it's the same unit though, from uh, from the last one, though. Yeah. So now let me ask you this, right? The people are in there. They're kind of like destroying the prison right now. You're on lockdown. I mean, what's going on over there as far as the lockdown and the staff? What's going on? <laughs> behind the door, you know, we uh behind the door, just waiting to take showers, you know. Just take a shower every three days. You know, we ain't taking a shower since Friday. We still wait. Uh, so today, hold on, let me stop you. Today's Monday and you still haven't got a... The last time you took a shower was on Friday. Yeah. This is the reality of prison, right? Uh, yeah, you know, you, you, you got a shelly, so, you know, the sink ain't going to do it all the way. You know what I'm saying? So, what's, the, sink. what's the food like? Tell the people what the food's like and speak up for me. I mean, you know, carb, <laughs> bread, little you know, cereal, uh, hard cereal, you know, you get some milk, you know, a cake, uh, lunch, uh, it depends on what day it is, you know, it's all right, small portion, it's just, you know. Is it bologna uh, and cheese every day or no? Yeah, brown bags. Round bag. Peanut butter or bologna, you know, no cheese now. <sighs> crazy way to live, man. What are some of the most craziest things you've seen since you've been at USP Pollock? <sighs> man, since I've been in here, man, I done seen some wild, crazy stuff. Speak up. You know, it, T, I need you to speak up. Crazy stuff. It, this is this is my whole take on this, and I I can't speak for every federal prison. You know what I'm saying? But this is me since I've been in prison. You know what I'm saying? It's like we get we get took away from our families, and we get sent to 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 prison to get rehabilitated, right? Ain't that what we get sent to prison for? Is to get rehabilitated? Well, when you get here. It ain't so much as you getting rehabilitated because your rehabilitation stops once somebody else do something. It ain't gotta be you. It can be one person that can shut a whole yard down for a week, a month, or months. So my whole rehabilitation process is de is, is, is dependent on one person thousands of people that's on the yard you know what i'm saying I, you can barely program you barely get to communicate with your family and you behind the door trying to look through a little spot to watch tv you know what i'm saying like 
the health, you know what I'm saying? Like, you say they supposed to, I thought we were supposed to get wrecked, you know, at least seven hours a week, once a day or something. Like, you know, we all, it ain't no record, you know, the human nature, they, you know, we need something. Like, that's, the, you know, that's something that your body needs, you know what I'm saying? Like, we don't get no sun, Mike. Like, it's people in here, you know what I'm saying? And I ain't saying, yeah, everybody in here good people, none of that. I ain't saying I'm a good person. I know everybody make mistakes, but I came here to get rehabilitated and be a better man, not only for myself and my family, but just for society in general. And how can you get that when you just constantly put behind the door, you know what I'm saying, just stuck in a room all day? You know what I'm saying? I they definitely don't take it forever because they got a photocopy every letter, all of your pictures. You know what I'm saying? Like even with the shakedown, like you know, it's people that been there for thirty years, forty years, whatever, and it's photos. You know, you get a one photo album. You know what I'm saying? So, it, doing people's photos away. You know what I'm saying? Like some of them pictures you can't get back. You know what I'm saying? Like it's just. Like this whole thing is just, it's traumatizing within itself because, you know, you, like I said, you're supposed to be getting here rehabilitated. And not only do you got to deal with the other people in here, you know what I'm saying? A lot of people lashing out and getting into it with staff because, you know, it's some people who come in, hey, they do their job, they here, you know what I'm saying? And some people actually do want to help people in here. But, you know, it's some people who come in and they, you know, they the part of the problem. They egging it on. You know, I had a CEO tell me if it was up to him, shit, we would never come out of the cell. We'd be stuck in a cell all day without no window. I'm like, damn, I, I couldn't even respond to it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I wanted to say so much, you know what I'm saying? But just when I'm at in my life, I don't even feed off that energy no more. I just knew, like, hey. I ain't got nothing else to say to do and nothing he says to ever even affect me no more because I ain't got nothing to say to him and he, he don't matter to me no more. You know what I'm saying? No like, doubt. Let me ask you, I, let me ask you a couple questions, T, right? Like, yeah. you know, sometimes the DC dudes have a bad rep, right? And I don't, yeah. I don't really put that out there because I met a lot of good dudes from DC. Mario happens to be one of them, right? Yeah, it's, 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 it's actually a lot of them. I can't, I can't from me from the from the ones that I met. Yeah. And let me ask you this because you're there, you're living there, you're living this life. I mean, yeah. th do the DC dudes get busy? Ah, oh, wait, do they? <laughs> <laughs> uh, man, look, they the busiest for the most part. You know what I'm saying? Because it's like, like at the end of the day, you know, we all men, but like, hey, there's some people who just don't think, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of those are the ones where they get to that. It ain't no thinking, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, straight go. I mean, the D.C. dudes are on go time and they stick together, don't they? Most definitely, no matter what, wherever they at. Who do you think's the most dangerous car at USP Polak right now? You know what's crazy? At any given time, any one of them. Because I done seen it from every ethnicity and whatever culture, like whatever red, like car, whatever, like any even given one of them. Cause I, like when I first got here, Right, like it was crazy. When I came, it was a lockdown, you know? So I'm in a unit and it's a guy, right? Like he's telling a dude, like, man, dude, uh, dude told on somebody or something. I'm like, damn. So where they like, what'd he tell on? And we're dude like, man, he told on my partner cause his partner had touched somebody's kid. And I'm like, hold on. But he like, no, nah, he didn't really tell, but he like, he didn't tell his girl did, and he basically, you know, condoned it. And I'm like, hold on, man, what? <laughs> like, it was a crazy thing. So, next thing you know, you know, that dude, and he's tripping because the other dudes is like, nah, man, you tripping. If you get to whatever, you know, do whatever. So, 
the dude ends up confronting dude or whatever. They go in the room. Dude ain't having it. He was down for a minute, too. He ended up whooping on the dude. Man, you know dude, but when he ended up whooping on the dude, I think he can hit him. You know, he stabbed him. Man, dude came out and tell his partner, hey, man, dude, whoop de whoop They like, they fight. But he's like, yeah, he, he probably beat me, but he poked me. They said, wait, he poked you. So they get together, and three of them go down there. Man, you know that this dude who they was going after stabbed every one of them dudes more than 15 times, collapsed their lungs and all that. One person hit him one time, man. And, and it was an accident shot. I seen it with my own eyes. It was like one of them no look throws. And when they was picking him up and taking him out, he, everything looked cool. Then he just dropped completely numb. Like it was like a, a, a foot, nothing. Like you seen, like there's nothing to do. And it happened instantly. And I'm like, dang. Was it shocking? <sighs> was it? Because when you seen what he was doing to everybody else, you would have thought that it was, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. And I'm just like, dang, at any time, you know what I'm saying? Anybody. You know, like, you're in there, and, you know, you went in there as a young man, you know, you were 24 years old, and you end up with a 24-year sentence for possession of a firearm. I want, you know, the young dudes to know that the feds don't play games. You know, you, you got a gun, and... They're, they're going to send you up the road. They're going to put your lights out. And I know personally that you're fighting like hell. I'm trying to help you on your case. And, you know, hopefully yeah. we're going to get some rhythm. But, you know, if you had to give a message before we get ready to close the show, right? You know, and I appreciate you coming on here. But what message would you give to a young man that's heading down the wrong road, T? Man, honestly, for any young dude who out there with whatever walk of life they on, I would suggest, you know, Follow your dreams, man. Like, the straight life, like, anything that you can do, you can do it as long as you believe in yourself. You don't need no validity. You don't need none of that from nobody as long as you believe in yourself and you keep God first, man. All uh, this, the, the glamorous life, like the, the fast money, the cars, the clothes, you know, I done, I done dibbled and dabbled. I, ain't, I wasn't no millionaire or nothing like that, but I done had a lot of my life, man. And all the friends you think you got, when you come in here, you gonna see who your real friends is. I don't think nobody can imagine being in a cell and it, just being in a cell by yourself, man, stuck with your thoughts. And just imagine being in a room away from your family and everybody that you love and care about and don't ever hear from them until you reach out to them. You know, you, okay. you know, T, I read your case, right? And I know you were a young dude. You were a street dude, man. You were getting money. You, you know, you did what you had. You were living that street life, man. And, you know, there's a lot of dudes out there that are pretty much living that street life. And they're, they're you know, they're heading down the road that you went down and, you know, you're sitting in prison. How bad do you want to get out of prison, man? Look, man, they can take anything, all that that I ever did, man. They can have all that. Like, it's the last place anyone would want to be. Like, this I do it. Like, you know, besides, you know what I'm saying, any type of rat stuff or stuff like that, not even, you know, before I compromise giving up somebody else other than that, I'll do anything to get out there, man. To be out there with my son and my family, man. You know that's that's what really matters, man. I'm gonna I'm gonna I'm gonna close this off with me and you, but I'm gonna I'm gonna keep talking, but I'm gonna close the show as far as you go, and then I'm gonna give a message later on. So, right. but hey, man, I definitely appreciate you coming on and talking a little bit about what happened with Mario, and you know, giving your perspective on the DC dudes. Where you know, I don't shed a bad light on DC dudes, but some guys say that, but I don't. So. So, you know, that's that's the little interview at USP Pollock. You know, I had told people that I had someone that was going to call in and we were going to talk about what happened over there. I know a lot of people are like, damn, man, you know, sometimes the DC dudes get upset. They shoot me emails or whatever. 
And they're like, yo, you disrespecting the homies? Never that, bro. I don't never disrespect any of your homies. And keeping it 100, man, like I said, I did time with Mario. I think Mario was a really good dude. Intelligent dude. I mean, you know, he was dangerous when he had to be, but always respectful. Any dealings that I had with him, they were always respectful dealings. But USP Polak is a place of danger, man. It's a place where you're like, wow, look where I'm at. I know when I went there, I was like, wow, look where I'm at. I knew that I was in the danger zone. I knew that I was in a prison where, you know, it could be kill or be killed. That's what it came down to over there. You know, it was a place where, you know, the prisoners, the cops, you know, the nurses, everybody's nervous over there. Nobody goes to work every day and they're like, yo, I can't wait to get there. People are like, damn, I got to do another day over here. You know, sometimes you get people with a mentality where they're like, man, I, I run this spot. I'm, you know, I'm this, I'm that. Some of the cops are like that, but not many were like that when I was over there. There was a W when I was there that was just a nasty, nasty dude, like an ex-military. He tried to act like he was super tough. But never forget, man, that you're around people that are serving life. They don't care that you're the warden. They don't care that you're the AW. If they feel like they're disrespected, they're going to handle that business. And unfortunately, you know, that's what happened you know, between these two guys, man, Mario and the kid Brian. Brian gave back a bunch of time, and now he's about to get it all back. They're probably going to give him a cop out 20 years, 25 years. I guarantee that. You know, sometimes people can't take the L, man. Mario, you know, they say Mario went in there, put his hands on him. He's a big kid, young boy, big boy. You know, they had their little their little fight over the, over the telephone, and Mario came out on top. And sometimes people chalk that shit up. But in the prison environment, you can't always chalk it up. People are like, nah, hell no, I ain't going out like that. Dude disrespected me, beat me up, knocked my teeth out. No way. I'm not going to stay living here around this dude. And he got the up, man. You know, when you heard it from the dude that's been there for a while, serving time over there, Mario might have been using the bathroom when all this happened. But you know what, man? Rest in peace, Mario, man. And just young men, young ladies, man, get your life together. It's not the place to be. Blood on the Razor Wire TV until tomorrow. With respect, we're out. Thank you.